Uh, Mr. Vyas, thank you very much for your time. Great to have you uh, with us. Managing Director, CEO, CMI. Prashant, this side, sir. Let's start, as, as, as always, uh, by just the big numbers uh, for, the, uh, for the quarter, Jan to March. Uh, what have been uh, new investment projects, stall progress on stall projects, project commissionings? Uh, just some of the big heads, sir. How, how do they look? So there is some good news and there is some bad news. So the good news is that uh, project completions have increased and they have increased quite smartly. So we saw 4.5 trillion rupees worth of investments getting commissioned in the quarter of Jan to March 2016, which is a record high. Never in the past has the number touched 4.5 trillion rupees. And uh, this comes after uh, the uh, September-December quarter, where also we saw the number rise up to close to four trillion. So we saw four, nearly four trillion, and then four and a half trillion coming up in the next quarter. So both these numbers look a lot better than what the past shows. Uh, earlier we had numbers which touched 4.2 trillion in 2011-12, but since then those numbers went down, and they went. Uh, down to close to 3.2 trillion. So compared to what we have seen in the recent past, there certainly is a clear pickup in uh, the commissioning of projects. So that's a, that's a good thing to, to see. But uh, in terms of new investment proposals, stall projects, uh, no, the news is not very good. So stall projects have uh, increased and new investment proposals have not increased. So that is the basic, basic uh, finding from the Jan March numbers. So, just to go back to the last answer, you said uh, the value of total projects which went on stream, which uh, uh, these factories were commissioned, that is 4.3 lakh crores, right? 4.3 trillion rupees. 4.5 uh, trillion rupees. Yeah, okay, okay. So, 4. that's 4.5 lakh, lakh crores. Lakh crore. yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, and you're saying that this is this is the high this is the highest ever, uh, one of the highest ever in the highest recent ever. past. No, it is it is the highest ever. We have never seen four and a half lakh crore rupees worth of investments being commissioned. So that's a very uh, very significant uh, improvement. Uh, the numbers uh, were close to 4.2 trillion rupees in 11-12. Then they went down. They rose to 4 trillion rupees in 14-15, uh, uh, in and then now they're up to 4.5 trillion in 15-16. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, so this is, I mean, uh, this is how it would, uh, I guess, pan out, right? I mean, existing projects getting commissioned before new projects come on, uh, new project yes. proposals are announced, put together, etc. So you, does this indicate to you, in the overall sense, an improvement? Well, not exactly, uh, because uh, one doesn't wait for an earlier project to get commissioned before you start off on a new project because we have a very large base of entrepreneurs. We have a large number of people who are investing into various kinds of industries and the country still requires a lot of investments to ensure that the growth is sustained, number one. Number two, uh, capacities are created where there is, uh, where there is low capacity. So, and there's improvement in quality, which is always a requirement. So I don't think there's any dearth of uh, opportunities for people to uh, propose new projects. What is good in this is that what was uh, falling in terms of the total number of projects commissioned, the number that was falling has come back again. Uh, I'd like to put a small asterisk mark to the 4.5 trillion rupees that in real terms, it is still lower than what we saw in 11-12. In 11-12, we saw 4.2 trillion rupees worth of investments. Now, adjust the 4.5 trillion for inflation since then, then uh, the number is not all that impressive. But it's still uh, good to note that uh, a declining trend has been arrested and we are back to getting more than 4.5 trillion. Also, when we add that 4.5 trillion estimate will go up in time because commissioning of projects information comes with a lag. New investment proposals don't have that lag like uh, commissionings do have. Hmm. What is the, uh, uh, if you break up the 4.5 lakh number, are there any large projects which make up the bulk of this figure? Or this is, I mean, spread through and what no, kind, of kind of industries, etc.? No, it's kind of spread out. Yeah. 
So, so it's, it's quite spread out. It's, it's there in all kinds of industries. So there's no concentration in any one industry. Uh, so this is not a story of power or of, or of refinery or something of the kind. Refinery has a slightly larger share, but uh, it's still spread out. It's spread out over the services sector as well. So, so this is not the story of one or two projects or one or two sectors. It's well spread out. Right, right. Uh, fair enough. B before I get, uh, ask you for your qualitative assessment of why this is happening now, let me just get the other numbers as well. Uh, the new project uh, proposals and the stalled projects, the data on that, sir. So, new projects uh, announcement uh, dropped 25%. So, that's quite a sharp drop and that does not sound very good. So, 25% fall in new investment proposals down to 8 trillion rupees compared to over 10 trillion rupees in the, in the previous year uh, does not sound very good at all. So, uh, why is um, India Inc. or the government or foreigners enthusiastic in proposing new projects uh, is still a, still a problem which is not resolved. Um, so there isn't any enthusiasm. Uh, there isn't that great rush to say that we need to set up projects uh, of all kinds, whether it's infrastructure or mining or manufacturing uh, or services. Uh, that rush is not there. There are new investments. Eight trillion is still a number, uh, but uh, it's not large enough. It's not what we saw in the earlier years when we saw the rush in 2004, 5 through uh, 8, 9. Uh, we saw numbers like 20 trillion, 25 trillion, 22 trillion rupees worth of new investment proposals being made then. Now correct that for inflation and 8 trillion looks really small. So that's a source of worry. Uh, it's not that you need to first clear the uh, stock of projects on hand and then get the new ones. That was not the case in the past. So I think this 8 trillion rupees uh, is a worrisome number. We should worry about this and get uh, this corrected in time to ensure that new projects do come in. On the stall projects, we still see an increase in projects getting stalled. And I think this is a bigger worry. So once, uh, once an entrepreneur or the government agency uh, proposes a project and gets it going, it goes beyond the announcement stage and gets into the implementation stage, and then if it stalls it for whatever reason, then that's a, that's a more serious problem. So one has seen uh, in 15, 16 an increase in the, uh, in the stalled projects. That's a problem. Right. Uh, sir, is there, a bit of a, is there a bit of an inconsistency in the data in terms of uh, the uh, that, that should stall projects and projects being commissioned move directionally in the same in, in, in the same area, in the same direction? If stall projects, the value of stall projects are increasing, uh, the projects which are being commissioned actually has to go, uh, should go down. But this is showing, this, uh, both these numbers are moving in the opposite direction. That's right. And uh, you have a point, you're right, that both should move in the right, in the same direction or in the opposite directions, if commissioning of projects is happening, then stall projects should go down in the sense that they are not getting stalled anymore, they're getting commissioned now. But the data shows us that while well, commissioning is going up, stall projects is also going up. And what is worrisome is that uh, the outstanding stalled projects today is 12.3% of all projects under implementation and this ratio is at a record high. So. So this is what is some. Sorry, what is that number, Mr. Vyas? 12.5 is what, sir? Sorry, I missed that. 12.3%. Yeah. Yeah, 12.3% of the projects under implementation are stalled. Okay, 12.3% of projects okay, under so implementation these, are stalled. Okay. That's right. So these are not projects that have been shelved away or abandoned. They have not been shut down. They're just, the implementation is stalled. And the implementation is stalled uh, for, for reasons that are not, uh, you know, identifiable against anything very specific. So you go back to, uh, you go back to the years 2011, 12, 12, 13, 13, 14, 
And the problem over there was largely about projects being stuck because of raw material availability. We had a gas availability problem, we had a coal, avail coal import problem, we had a problem with iron ore, uh, but around now there's no such problem. And nobody is saying land acquisition is a problem because people who see land acquisition to be a problem are not proposing any projects anymore. So the predominant reason why people are saying we are stalling our projects is they say that the economic conditions or business conditions ain't good enough, uh, whatever that means. So the reasons are not specific to an environmental clearance or a non-environment related clearance or uh, fuel stock availability. It's nothing specific. And yet, stalled projects are higher uh, than ever in the past compared to the projects under implementation. So, if you look at the numbers carefully, this number is something that uh, we should tackle. We should ensure that projects do not get stalled. So, you're saying at the end of March, the total stock of, the total uh, value stock-wise in terms of stalled projects is the highest ever, right? Yes, is the highest ever compared to under implementation. So it's a ratio. Uh -huh. In rupees okay. term, also it is highest. But rupees, you know, you you correct for inflation, etc. This ratio is important. Stall project compared to under implementation projects. That's twelve point three percent. Right, right, right. Uh, fair enough. And you're saying that the reasons vary. It's not one specific. You you can't sort of point to as we have done over the last many years about land. Uh, raw material, etc. It's maybe it is lack of effective demand or whatever, right? I mean, it's the economic condition, uh, which is also uh, being yes. cited as a reason. Possibly. Yes. Okay. So just to go back to the new investment proposals, uh, we had this Make in India event here in Maharashtra. I think it happened over the last three months, in the in, in 2016, and I don't remember the numbers exactly, but some many lakh crores worth of new projects were announced. Uh, uh, then, I mean, does this take into account th those as well, or? So, so what happens is when you have uh, an event of this kind, and all kinds of state governments do that. In the Jan to March quarter, we had I think four states doing that. West Bengal did it, Andhra did it, uh, Maharashtra, and one more state did it. Karnataka did it. So we had four states uh, holding such summits. And um, each of them uh, has announced a very large number. Uh, the problem is when you go in trying to figure out uh, which are the specific projects that they're talking about when they're saying that so much investment is proposed, we don't get those specific projects. So to the extent we could get specific project announcements, we have included all of them. But if somebody just says that so many trillion dollars will come into my state, uh, it doesn't mean anything. So uh, we try to find out, we go to their website, we make phone calls, we do all kinds of things to connect with the government to find project by project information and all that is included. And the Jan-March uh, new investment proposal numbers compiled by us is largely um, composed of these announcements. So after taking into all these uh, events by state governments, we still add up for the year as a whole only 8 trillion rupees. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay, uh, fair enough. So, a a 8 trillion rupees is the total in uh, the, the full, for the full year, right? Sorry, I just want to get that number right. Yes. In financial year 16. Yes, yes. it's for the full year. Yes. yes for the full year. Okay, okay. And I think in one of our earlier conversations, you had uh, told me that uh, even if you take the announcements made at such state investment fairs, etc., the actual conversion ratio is only is in low single digits, right? That's right, that's right. Okay, so I mean that is even more, uh, I mean worrying or whatever you want to call it. So a lot of expectation that the RBI is going to do something tomorrow. Sorry, I'm digressing from the data, uh, but a fair bit of expectation on that front, as always. So nothing new there as well. Uh, any, any thoughts, sir, on what uh, the Reserve Bank of India and interest rates can do? Well, I think um, if interest rates have to play a role in spurring investments, then they need to drop very sharply. I think uh, one percentage point fall, which the markets may celebrate if it happens, 
is of no consequence to real investments. So one needs a real sharp drop, close to halving of the cost of capital in India. If that happens, it will play a significant role in spurring investments. But if it is something which is, you know, small, I'll, I think it will make no impact at all on investments. That's my perspective from an investments uh, into new capacities perspective. Fair enough. So thank you very much, Mr. Vyas. Appreciate you joining in.